With that, I may look for, as I'm moving around the lake, I may look for an area that springs may come up and there might be little bubbles that are coming up. Uh, if it was much warmer weather, well, it's pretty warm now, y you might even go without waders just to feel the difference in temperatures when you're looking for cooler water around the springs. And you, you just paddle around and you can sometimes feel it or see it with the bubbles. Do the fish like that colder water? During the warmer weather, they will. It's just nice to know it's there, that if you're not hitting other places, if you don't see them cruising the shoreline, that they may be looking for that cooler water. Or maybe it's, uh, maybe it's warmer in, in real cold water areas, because the springs will come out at a fairly constant temperature. Maybe there's ice forming around here, I and mean, over there it would be a lot nicer for them. So right. just nice to know where those are. I have no idea if it is or where it is, but I'll be looking for it trying to observe where it might be. Also, I'm looking at, um, when we first got here, it was fairly calm. Now a little breeze is kicking up, so I can see how that wind will affect your fishing. Uh, right now I can see we're going to be casting right into the wind if we start right here, so uh, the, the gods are telling us something. I don't know what it is, but uh, they're, they're, they're speaking to us now. The little bit of a breeze, which is okay for fishing, in fact, it's okay for along here too, because that lets me know that anything that might be drifting in the water would be coming right up to this shore, and where would be a likely place for the fish to look for it? Right up along this shore, along the reeds. So that's another indication that would be good. I would also look for points that come out like this that are almost perpendicular to the wind, mm -hmm. so that as the wind is blowing by, there's there's calm area behind it, that fish will cruise that area a lot. I've mm -hmm. seen that a lot. We're in uh, central Washington now, but any place that there's a, a lot of wind, you observe that how fish feed in that wind. Just because it's blowing like crazy doesn't mean the fish aren't feeding. It's starved to death over here. I mean, the wind <laughs> blows a lot and a, and a lot of the time. So you have to learn to use that wind to your advantage, not only in your casting, but also in your fishing. And we'll talk about that if it, if it comes up in, a little bit during, uh, a little later in the show here. <clears throat> Excuse me. The uh, wind as it's coming this direction at us, it'll also tell you if it really kicks up, that if you remember what's going on over here, we can look, see it's calm, there's a bay back in there, it's calm, that whole side over there, if it keeps this direction, that if it's really too bad to cast into, we can move over to the other side, at least get some relief for a little bit, you know, sometimes it's nice just to get out of the wind and relax, and that makes a lot of difference in your fishing. People think too much just of of tunnel vision right down the line to the fish. But it's a lot more than that. It's, it's a real attitude. I mean, this is a hobby. This is a sport. It's not putting meat on the table. I mean, that's, that's a long time ago past. This is a lot, not a lot different to myself and probably to you and to other people I know than golf is to someone or tennis is to someone. It's, it's a hobby and a sport that you enjoy doing and not just for one particular reason, not just for bringing a fish up and whacking it on the head and throwing it on the table. It involves everything. So getting out of the wind, improving your attitude is part of the, is part of the uh, day. And I'm, I'm a real firm believer of that. I've taught too many schools where people are out here and it just beats them to death. If you can just let them rest, get a, kind of a second wind, mm -hmm cast a little bit different area, fish a little different tactic, makes all the difference in the world. So I'm also looking for that kind of a situation here too. Uh, there, there are several people fishing it. As much as I hate to admit it, that's a real good indication if they're all in one spot where there might be a lot of fish. Uh, <laughs> if there was nobody here, of course that wouldn't be there. But what I see here is a boat over there and one there and one there, there, here. There's not much going on in any one place. I've seen a few fish caught, so it's pretty sporadic. Fish may be cruising. I've seen a few rises along shore here, so things aren't, aren't concentrated, and they're not a ball of fire at any one place. So uh, it's going to take some searching out, trying to figure out what they're doing. They may be very deep. Um, uh, this weather, even though it's late in September right now, uh, you have to think in terms of time, time of the year. If we were here in July, I'd be looking for 